I'm John. I've been living off grid in the high desert of Arizona for three years now. I'm out here working on being the best version of myself that I can be, and I hope I inspire some of you guys to do the same. ever dreamed of owning a homestead but you felt hopeless that maybe you didn't make enough money maybe you just hate your job this video will probably inspire you because I was laid off due to COVID and I only had six thousand dollars I bought a piece of land took my van and a couple of these IBC totes and a little beat-up trailer and headed to the high desert of Arizona I really came out here with next to nothing and flash forward three years I have enough rain harvesting surface and cisterns to harvest and store 14,000 gallons of rainwater. I also currently have six pigs. My sow is pregnant with more piglets. I've got a goat, six hens, five cats, three dogs, <laughs> and we're going to get some fish for the aquaponics system soon. In addition to my ability to grow and harvest my own meat, I originally had a tiny garden out here, but since then I, I had a hoop house and now I'm rebuilding it. It's going to be stick frame with corrugated plastic like my geothermal back there. And you can't see much, but it is planted. This will be my salsa shack. And I have a raised bed garden over here. This is loaded with potatoes and other things. I have wild goji bushes all over the place. There's probably 10 or 15 of these bushes. I'm hoping to harvest a bunch of goji berries this year. I have swells that run down around the way all over my homestead that are loaded with different things. And I have three, well, four Hugo cultures now. Um, this one is planted mostly with melons. I have sunchokes back there. This one I planted mostly with corn, sunflowers. There's six rows of potatoes back there and more swells all the way around the homestead. That's a peach tree back there. It's about six feet tall. This one in the middle is a cherry tree. It's a choke cherry tree or a wild cherry tree. All of these bushes, these are all arugula. On this side of the chicken coop, I have a Granny Smith apple. And on the opposite side here, this is a honey crisp. I have a beehive set up on my geothermal here. This is 32 feet long. 16 feet wide and about 14 feet from the ground to the roof. I think it might be 16 feet back there Inside here. I have a lot more potatoes. I've done really well with potatoes I know the gardens don't look like much now, but just wait. I'll sh I have had really successful gardens for a beginner I have a lot of alfalfa and wheat throughout the homestead growing all over the place mostly to continually get more seeds so I can put more down there's a lot more melons in here. I think I have some filled pumpkin and a lot of snap peas. That's a blueberry. These are mostly Swiss chard, maybe some beets in there. Um, a bunch more snap peas down here. Another blueberry. Hopefully that grape starts to green up one of these days. I have about a hundred hybrid willow trees that I've planted. I, I got them to root. They were flourishing, looking green leaves, and then I planted them and really, they're not real happy, but I do think they'll bounce back. I have three giant sequoia. They're doing well. And then up here, because now it's finally time to plant. All Everything you see was planted way ahead of the freeze date. It's finally time to plant stuff, and so, um, well, I've got a bunch of different tomatoes and different things back here. Here's a sprout finally coming in. This is an old trailer bed. And then below that I have a vinyl tank. That's about a 400 gallon tank. And above is the grow bed. I used little lava rock for the media to grow in. There's more snap peas that are growing in. I'll have to tie that one up soon arugula, mint. These were just some things to get the system started. The system will be cycled soon. Then I can add fish and I plan to add trout. 
Trout survive up to 77 degrees, but thrive when it's cooler. It's currently 50, 58 degrees in the tank here, and it's been 81 degrees yesterday, but all year round it cools down to like 50 at night. I don't expect it to get much hotter than 57 degrees in there. With it being 81 in the day, if, I mean, the very max is like three days it hits 96, it might hit like 77 degrees for a few hours, maybe 80 for a few hours, but then it'll cool down. I really think I'm going to be able to keep these trout most of the year. And if I find that there's a problem with that, I could probably get a little refrigerator and run some tube through it and cool the water a little bit more. But I would be able to keep trout way more of the year than I would be able to do tilapia. Tilapia, my water may never get hot enough to support tilapia. I have some super worms in here. They're a little slow to start in the mornings because of the cold night, but I thought these were mill, just regular millworms when I first got them. And so I have little one ounce containers on the way to breed these correctly because they're super worms. I've only had bees for like six or seven weeks and they've almost filled that entire bottom frame there, all 10 panels. Well, they've filled out at least half, maybe more. And soon I can remove the syrup from the top. I've been feeding them with syrup. They're not taking nearly as much because they are getting a lot of pollen from the dandelion and primrose out there. And then I can add the super on top and the, the queen bee excluder, allow them to keep all the honey that's down below. And then when it's time to harvest, I, I'll have the super for myself. If, if I need, I might just let them have that too. We'll see what happens. All of the soil that I have on my homestead, I built from scratch just using the native soil and then continually adding compost. And I get a lot of compost from my animal manure and cardboard boxes. And I just have a system over here to break everything down. And it just keeps getting better. So the next season will be better. Hugo cultures, they have the lowest quality because they're newer. But it'll keep getting better. I did do, uh, that was my best soil, the six rows of potatoes. So that's pretty good composted soil now. Every surface I can collect rainwater off of, I do. So that garden, that'll have a rain harvesting system. Um, my shed here, this harvests quite a bit of water. And I have a 3,600 gallon tank back here that it goes into. I built that with a vinyl liner for like two, well, I made three of them for 200 bucks. And then I've got a pump on there. I, I just need to get the pipes and I'll be able to go over to this cistern or the one over there and pump water out anytime I want by hand if we need five gallons. And of course I can pump it around the homestead using electric pumps. The cisterns have overflows and then there's swells around the entire homestead. I can plant stuff in these like sorghum that does really well. Uh, the new, the new geothermal is going to have rain gutters toward the bottom. Those will dump into this swell. And this swell goes around the property and over here to the potatoes that I laid out. So when it rains this season, as the monsoons hit, it'll irrigate the potatoes over here. And any overflow can make its way out into the uh, orchard, which all the other swells feed into my pond. The pond was full for 10 months from, from, well, from the monsoon season. And I watered my dogs every single day for 10 months and it finally dried up and it just barely dried up. Within a week of being dried up, it was completely dry. It rained the other day and actually put quite a bit of water in there. So, uh, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I want, I want those edges to be the same as these. And it's going to monsoon soon and fill this thing up again. So I got to hurry and do that. The overflow from this comes out and I've started to dig rows. Basically swells that go out and I'll be able to plant trees out. My property goes quite a ways out still. And uh, this is where I plan to start the future orchard. I have black locusts I'm trying to get to come in. I've got those hundred hybrid willow trees. I've got a bunch of poplar, Lombardi. 
uh, the sequoias, and as time goes on, I'm going to be able to plant those around the homestead to create a lot of shade, a lot of wind block, and a canopy to make it easier to grow down below, just like you see in the forest. In addition to the cisterns and the pond that I harvest all that water from, I have IBC totes around the homestead. These are what I usually water the gardens and drink out of, and the bottom one I use to fill the, the dog bowl for the, for the dogs since the pond dried up. So like, I don't know, like a month I'll do that. Over here I have my showering station, so I can access the shower from inside the shop, and I, I can do laundry over here. I've got a barrel that I just turn the laundry with. I use an old-fashioned crank that this does a great job. This is the hardest part to do by hand. So that rings it all out. Um, I can pile it up over here. And then, of course, I can do dishes and whatever. And soon, I have a couple faucets. So I'm going to set up a, a faucet out here. And then I'll set one up that's down inside the geothermal so I have water anywhere I need it. I learned that the grass that's all over my property, there's a lot of it. It's called hairy grandma grass. It goes on forever. And see over here, you don't see any really. Because I went out here for quite a while with a weed whacker by hand. And I cut it down and I harvested hundreds of pounds of my own hay. I built myself a baler and I can, it makes 30 pound bales and I was just piling it in there and I fed my, my livestock, the pigs and the goats, the, well there were goats at the time, they ate almost only hay from my land all winter long. During the winter I pull down the sunshades because they can't hold the snow but in the summer it's real nice to have that just like when this comes up there will be like 10 feet of shade there and you can see this shade cell, there's maybe five or six feet of shade over there around the corner. It moves over, it'll be on top of these during the, my rocking chairs during the heat. I plan to set up another shade cloth on the other side. I just need to get some 12 foot four by four posts and I can stretch a piece over that'll enclose my blacksmithing area. You know, this kind of tooling area back here. That way it'll have shade over it and I can still drive under it. Uh, and then on this other side here, so, so this is the one agricultural sh uh, shed. I'm going to build another over here that's near my scrap yard. Put my woodworking tools in there. It'll be a woodworking area and I'll be able to harvest water off of that roof and build another cistern behind it. And I'm going to double my rain harvesting system until I have enough to get a couple mules that I'll be able to ride around or anywhere. If I need transportation, I'll have it. And I just need to get that water in place and then grow some more feed. This root cellar is eight feet by eight feet and it's 10 feet deep. And last, fall I harvested a lot of spaghetti squash and I was able to store it in there and I didn't finish eating the spaghetti squash until it started warming up it was the end of winter and I and I finally finished a few months ago so it does a great job of keeping my food preserved it really it really makes a big difference in the like during the summer it's like 30 or 40 degrees cooler in there which isn't perfect, but it's a whole lot better than anywhere else on the homestead. Some people are probably wondering how I use the bathroom. <laughs> like I said, I came out here with little to nothing. And this outhouse around the composting system was just a tarp. But the composting system is great there. It's a, a county approved system. I have a permit for it. And it's just a two barrel system. You know, you go in one while the other one composts and then you rotate it back and forth and you can throw the humanure out under trees you know you just probably don't want to throw it in your garden it's safe to do but i don't know the county doesn't want to do really and then uh well i'm gonna build i'll get some more posts soon and build a nice enclosure for that soon of course i have a solar system i have almost never run a generator you just don't need to anymore you know they have really efficient systems my hands down favorite system is my super base pro it's a zendier super base pro 2200 it's small and it's super powerful for being so small it can take this entire array and then some 
uh, so it charges in two hours and a hundred percent charge keeps my entire homestead running until the next day and I charge it again between that and the 400 amp hour system that I have in the van it's two 200 amp hour batteries connected and then I just have like a one or no I have 200 watts going into it you know and that's it and those two systems keep my homestead going but I've tried other systems in fact I have another 48 volt system that's just sitting there it's been sitting there for quite a while and so uh, well, solar is important. If you get the right system, you'll never need to run a generator. And who wants to do that and be the loud, noisy neighbor if you don't have to? I live in my van. I've been in my van for, gosh, it might be five years now. It's crazy. Um, I love it in there. It's super comfy. But I'm currently working with the county. Um, I'm going to... So this is my composting system, right, for going to the bathroom. But you need a separate black water system. Most counties require a, you know, a septic system of some sort, and you can do an alternative septic system here. And so between the composting system and a black water system for the sink that'll be in my home, um, well, I can get those systems permitted, which qualify as a, a septic system, and then I can permit my home. So that'll be coming in the future. You know, it's, I'm taking my time with it, but it's coming. I'm working with the county on that system and um, we'll get them to come out and permit that and then we'll go in working toward building a, a small house if you found the video entertaining uh, please subscribe so you don't miss future videos check out the links below if you'd like to finance a piece of land like mine for 200 bucks a month and save 10 percent use my code dlfrugal10 and i'll catch you guys on my next video